Hello physical scientists and math learners, I'm Miss Martins and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss a lesson. Tell me what topic you would like to see next. Enjoy the lesson. So, number one, you always, 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 always try highest common factor first. So for the big numbers, the highest common factor of 4 and 16 is 4, because 4 can go into both of them. And then we can take out an x because both of the terms have x in them and we can take out a y because both terms have a y in them. So we need to remember when we're taking out a variable as a highest common factor, we need to take out the variable with the lowest exponent. So when we take out x, it's either x squared or x to the power of 1. So obviously x to the power of 1 has a lower exponent, so I can take that out. And then when we take out the y's, either y to the power of 1 or y to the power of 3. So I'm taking out y to the power of 1. So that's my highest common factor. Then I open up my leftovers bracket. And then we look at term 1. What is left over from term 1? Or, think about it, what must I multiply this highest common factor by to get me term 1? And the answer is just x. Okay, because that's x to the power of 1. This is x to the power of 2. Remember, you'll add the exponents and it'll get you the squared. That's it. Okay. Then, next one. If I, what must I multiply this highest common factor by to get this? The answer is 4y squared. Okay, because 4 times 4 is 16. Then x to the power of 1. There's x to the power of 1. And then y to the power of 1 times y to the power of 2. Remember, you add the exponents and it'll get you y to the power of 3. So that is your answer. y to the power of 3 minus y. So remember again, first, highest common factor, always, always, always. There's no big numbers, so we're going to take out a variable as a highest common factor. And when we take out a variable, we need to take out the variable with the lowest exponent. So y to the power of 3 or y to the power of 1. We're obviously going to take out y to the power of 1, which is y. Then you open your leftover brackets. What must I multiply y to the power of 1 by to get y to the power of 3? Basically, you take out 1y, you have y to the power of 2 left. Because you'll add those exponents, it'll get you the y to the power of 3. That's for the first term. Then for the second term, I'm taking y out of itself. Or y divided by y. That gives me 1. Then, I hope you guys can look at that and you can see, oh my goodness, I need to go further. I actually need to do dots. Oh, bless me. Okay. Highest common factor first, and then dots. Because look at this bracket. There's two terms. There's a minus. This is a square number. And that's an even exponent. So we can do dots. And remember the framework for dots. This bracket splits into two brackets, got a plus in the one bracket, a minus in the other. Then because it's y squared, we're going to have y and y. And the square root, the square root of 1 is 1. Awesome. Next one, I hope you look at this and you can see, oh my goodness, common bracket, common bracket. So we're going to use common bracket here because this is term 1. the blue and the pink is term 2. So what's common between the blue term 1 and the pink term 2? The brackets. So it's highest common brackets. So we take out the brackets and that's now our common bracket, our common factor. Then we open up the leftovers brackets. In term 1, so in the blue term, what's left over? So if I take the bracket away, what's left over? x squared and in term 2, if I take the bracket away, what's left over? Minus 4. Okay, now, remember, before you finish off a factorizing sum, you need to stare at it. Stare at both brackets and think, can I factorize further? And I hope you saw, but in the second bracket, you can do dots. So first, common bracket.
then dots. Always run through the checklist. Two terms, a minus between the term, square number, and even exponents. So we can do dots. Leave the first bracket as is over there. Second bracket, because it's dots, splits into two. Plus, minus. This is just the framework you need to learn. Then because it's x squared, we're going x, x. Then the square root of 4 is 2 and 2. There we go. Now we can't go any further. Can't do anything else. So that is your final answer. Always try highest common factor first. So if you look here, can I take on a highest common factor? Nope. Can't. Then, can I do dots? Nope. Because there's three terms. So three terms should say to you, trinomial. Okay. Remember for trinomial, you need two brackets. First sign goes in the first bracket. Then, a minus times what will give me a minus? A minus times a plus. If you go minus times plus, you'll get a minus, right? And that's what our second sign is. So that's how we know that that must be a plus. Then we go x, x. Then we need to look for the factors of 14. So we've got 1 times 14, and we've got 2 times 7. Now remember, you need to play with these and decide if I plus them or if I minus them. They must give me the middle term. So 14 plus 1, 14 minus 1, neither of them give me a 5. So no. 7 plus 2 gives me 9, which isn't what I'm looking for, but 7 minus 2 gives me what I'm looking for. So this is the one that we're going to use. Okay, let's try, put the 7 here, I'm going to do it in pencil, I can find my pencil, there you go. Let's put the 7 here and the 2 here, let's just try, let's just check because it could actually be the other way. x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. Minus 7 times x is minus 7x. Minus 7 times 2 is minus 14. So if I have to simplify that, it's x squared. 2 minus 7 is minus 5x minus 14. Perfect. So I chose the correct way. It's x minus 7 and x plus 2. Okay, if you swap these around, unfortunately it's wrong and you need to check. Okay, we need to remember to do highest common factor first. Let's just check. Can I take out a highest common factor? No, can't. Can I do dots? Nope, there's three terms, so we should know we need to do trinomial. Trinomial. Framework for trinomial, two brackets. First sign goes in the first bracket. Then, a plus times what will get me a minus? A plus times a minus. Positive times a negative will get me a negative, which is what I'm looking for. Okay, then x, x. Okay. Then, we need to do the factors of 24. So we've got 1 times 24. We've got 2 times 12. We've got 3 times 8, we've got 4 times 6. Okay, now, remember, if I plus or minus them, they must give me a 5. So definitely not that one, definitely not that one. This one would work. 8 minus 3 would get me my 5. This one won't work either. So this is the one I'm looking for. So, let's go ahead and try the 8 first and then the 3 check x times x is x squared remember we check with foil x times x is x squared x times minus 3 is minus 3x 8 times x is plus 8x and 8 times minus 3 is minus 24 so if you simplify that minus 3 plus 8 is plus 5x and that is exactly positive 5x exactly what we're looking for
again, we're going to start with highest common factor. And if there's something in front of the x, you should kind of think, wait a second, I need to do highest common factor. Because when we do trinomials, we're used to having it just with nothing in front of the first term. So can I do highest common factor here? Yes, I can. And the highest common factor is 2. If I take 2 out of the first term, what's left? m squared. 2 out of the second term, or what must I multiply 2 by to get 6m? Answer is 3m. And then the last one, 2 times what will get me negative 20? Answer is negative 10. Okay, so HCF first. The HCF is 2. So you take 2 out, open up your leftover bracket, and you look for each term, what's left over, what must I multiply 2 by to get this? 2 times m squared will give me that. 2 times 3m will give me that. 2 times minus 10 will give me that. Then, if you look here, now I can do trinomial because I have three terms. It's definitely not dots. Okay, so you leave the 2 there. You can't throw the 2 away. It's still there. Leave it there. Then you open 2 brackets. First sign, first bracket. Plus times what will get me a minus? Answer is a minus. Then, because it's m squared, we're going to go m, m. Because m times m will get me back to m squared. And then we need to do the factors of 10. So 1 times 10 and 2 times 5. Obviously, this one doesn't work. 10 plus 1, 10 minus 1. That won't give me this that I'm looking for. So not that. 5 minus 2 gets me this. So this is the one I'm looking for. So let's try and put the 5 here and the 2 here. And let's just check quickly. So if I check, leave the 2 there. m times m is m squared. m times minus 2 is minus 2m. 5 times m is plus 5m. And then plus 5 times minus 2 is minus 10. So if you simplify that, minus 2 plus 5, minus 2 plus 5 is plus 3m, minus 10. So if you look here, this is the exact same as this, which means that this is correct. Minus 2. So this is your answer. This is just checking. This is your answer. Okay, next one. If we look over here, if it helps, you always highlight the different terms. So that is one term, it's one term. Now if you look at those and you think, what do these have in common? That's an A, just by the way. That's an A, like for apples. If you look at them, you think, crap, the only thing they have in common is almost this bracket, but not quite. So we need to do common brackets. But if they have the bracket in common, but not quite, but almost, then you need to do the switcheroo. Switcheroo. Okay, so, remember to do the switcheroo. First term stays the same. Then the sign here changes. So, plus A. And then you swap the X and the Y around. So, X minus Y. Now, if you look at them, they have the same bracket in common x minus y, x minus y. So what you can take out is a common bracket, x minus y, and what's left over, so let's open up the leftovers bracket. Let me just, again, here's the first term. Here's the second term. What the terms have in common now is the bracket. Like, the whole bracket is perfect after you've done the switcheroo. But changing that sign and swapping the x and the y, now they have the bracket common. So take out the common bracket. Then what's left over in the blue term? 7. What's left over in the pink term? Positive A. And this is your answer. The last line. Okay, let's try highest common factor first. By the looks of it, I can take out a highest common factor. So the highest factor 
the highest number that can divide into 6, 3, and 9 without a remainder is 3. Then it looks like they have some variables in common, so I can also take out variables as the highest common factor. x, 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 y, y, y. Okay, so I can take out an x and a y. And remember, when I take out a variable, I have to take out the variable with the lowest exponent. So that's x squared, that's x to the power of 1, and that's x to the power of 1. So I need to take out x to the power of 1. This is y to the power of 1, y to the power of 1, and y to the power of 2. So I need to take out y to the power of 1. So this is my highest common factor. Then open up the leftovers. What must I multiply this by to get the first term? 2x. Because 3 times 2 is 6. x to the power of 1 times x to the power of 1 is x squared. And then y to the power of 1 is y to the power of 1. What must I multiply this by to get the second term? If you look carefully, this and the second term, they are identical. They are the same. So if you're basically dividing this by the highest common factor, you're left with 1. You're taking the highest common factor out of itself. Okay, so it's minus 1. Because remember, if I say 3x to the power of 1 times 3x to the power of 1, y to the power of 1 times minus 1. I'll get minus 3x to the power of 1, y to the power of 1. Okay. Then, last term. You're going to go 3y. Because 3 times 3 is 9. x to the power of 1, there's x to the power of 1. Then y to the power of 1 times y to the power of 1 will give you y to the power of 2. And that's your answer. You can't do anything more in that bracket.